Hey guys, this is Justin, Vintage 55 Restorations, and this is Ellie Mae, my daughter. And today is a special family edition of Vintage 55 Garage, um, and we're going to be talking about our 1968 International Travel All. Um, it's uh, a mess right now, as you can see, we got it a couple months ago. But uh, the plan is for it to be our family wagon. and. Uh, Chelsea's got this dream of pulling a trailer behind it and putting bikes in the back and like 15 kids in it or something. I don't know. But anyway, so the whole point of this was for family wagon. Um, but uh, they're just pretty cool in general. So uh, 1968 International Travel All. You can see it's kind of like a Suburban. It's an SUV. Um, basically, when they came out, there wasn't such thing as an SUV. Uh, the only other thing around that was, you know, similar was a Chevy or GMC Suburban, and they weren't really exactly like this. Um, but uh, Travel All started in 52. Um, 53 is when they first uh, started calling them Travel Alls, but at that time, basically, the only wagons that were around were station wagons. They were car-based. Um, most of them were woodies. Um, 52 Ford kind of made a big splash with steel bodied all steel bodied wagons, but regardless they were car based This is definitely not car based. It's a truck. It's a truck with extra rows of seats and um, Basically, that's kind of what they had going it what they had going for them um, International Harvester the company has been around a long time. They uh, Now they're owned by somebody named Navistar um, and they make large, like, big rigs still. Um, but they don't make light-duty trucks anymore. They stopped making light-duty trucks in 75 uh, due to just poor management stuff. But the company's been around since 1902. They were making farm equipment. Uh, the Farm All tractor, you might have heard, they're pretty popular. Um, lots of uh, threshing equipment. Basically, anything a farmer could want, you can get it from International. And so then they started making trucks so that the farmers could buy trucks from them as well at the same dealerships and same things. Um, and they're a big hit. So in 1953, uh, the first uh, trucks came out that uh, were travel all based trucks. And uh, basically what, what they did was they just took the pickup that was there at the time and put it with a wagon back on the, on the end of it. And they were pretty popular. Um, and that was the first generation. There was four generations of uh, travel walls, and uh, they uh, they all did pretty well. The last generation was really square. Um, personally, I think they're really ugly, but they're also the most common. Um, this is the third generation uh, C series, and they made them from 1961 to 1968. Uh, this being in 1968, this is the last year before they changed them completely, squared them up, and made them totally different. Um, the only real difference kind of between those years was trim changes, option changes, stuff like that. Um, this, uh, this has the big uh, 345 V8 engine in it. They actually use that in tractors and bigger trucks as well. Uh, super dependable, um, really torquey, guzzles gas, um, but can't break them. Um, and it's got a four-speed board warner automatic transmission behind it, which uh, is kind of rare, is kind of why it took so long to, to find this particular car for us. So we're looking for an automatic two-wheel drive. Most of them are four-wheel drive stick. So this one's a little bit more rare. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the company itself um, has a really cool history if you want to go look back into that some more. Um, but uh, so that's kind of the history on this. But uh, if uh, if you want to come with me around the truck, I'll kind of walk you around. So the grill changed every year. Uh, this is the 68 grill. I'll show you what the 65 grill looks like in a bit because it's in the back seat because I'm changing this one out because I don't like the 68. But uh, when I got this particular car, um, this fender and the other fender were completely rusted out. Uh, replaced the fenders. As you can see, I'm, I started filling the trim holes. haven't really done anything finished yet. Um, the hood's all wonky. I actually can't open it at the moment because it it's all tweaked. It was super rusted. The whole car's real rusty. Uh, it was a Washington truck for most of its life. Um, and 
just rusted out. But it was being used very, very regularly until about five years ago. Um, made its way down to Arizona, which is where we found it. Um, I ended up trading one of my car benches to a guy out there for it. Went out and got it, dragged it home, and made my wife's dream come true. Um, but uh, now it sits until I, I can get around to it. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the point being is it was a Washington truck and it's pretty far gone. So anyway, obviously not the original uh, hubcaps and tires. Those have been replaced, but they're actually pretty nice. I'm going to keep those. Um, it has dual gas tanks, one on each side. Uh, we're only going to have one hooked up. I'm going to fill the other one. Um, these are the original mirrors. It writ on the 68. It had a trim piece that went all the way across here, all the way down the body. And it also had a rocker trim piece. Both kind of ugly and really 60s -y looking, so those are gone. I'm just gonna fill the holes and replace them with some trim spears, um, and kind of go from there. But uh, the glass on this is the coolest part to me. This huge wraparound rear piece of glass. Um, you can't find these things, they're impossible to find, so both of these being attacked was a big selling point on this particular truck. Um, you can see it's got a hitch on it. These things were made to work. Um, this thing can basically pull a tree out of the ground if you wanted it to, um, and we intend to use it as such. Not to pull trees out of the ground, but you get what I'm saying. Um, the back, there were two options you can get. You can get a tailgate with an uh, electric window, which this is, or you could get barn doors, which is two, two ones that open. I actually wanted a barn door model, but that's okay. Um, but as you can see, this tailgate was just, it's just, it's Swiss cheese. The hinges are even rusted through. So we went and got this in Phoenix and I should have looked a couple days earlier trying to find a tailgate. So we go out to Phoenix, take a whole day, drag the thing home, trailer at home, get home, and I start fiddling around online and uh, can't find anything. And then I watch an episode of Roadkill. Uh, if you guys watch that show, it's a, it's a good show. Um, watch an episode of Roadkill, which I usually do on Saturday mornings, but we went to Arizona on Saturday, and so I watched it on Sunday when I came back. If I would have watched it my normal day, I would have seen an episode that they had on where they were in a junkyard, and when they were in the junkyard, in one of the flyover drone shots, I see an international travel hall, 1968, in the very back of the yard, with a tailgate on it. Freaked out, paused it, figured out what yard it was, went online, found the number of the yard, called the yard, hey, do you still have a tailgate? Yeah, they still have the tailgate with glass, with the motor, a mile from where I picked up the travel all the day before. Which, obviously, a, uh, a tailgate is not something cheap to ship. Um, especially this one, which was super, super heavy, heavy, and we couldn't figure out why after we loaded it in here until we turned it sideways and a bunch of sand fell out. It's got like three sandbags worth of sand from sitting out in the middle of Arizona with the window down for 30 years. But anyway, my friend lives out there, brought it home. I now have a tailgate. I just haven't started messing with it yet. Um, tail lights are not original. That's one thing I did just when I was sitting in the, when it was sitting in the driveway. Uh, these are actually Falcon tail lights that I've cut down and put in there instead. Uh, I'm just, I'm a sucker for bullets. And so I'll put a bullet on, bullet tail light on anything if I can. Um, that's it for this side. We'll go ahead and take a look on the inside now. So, as you can see, um, there's two rows of seating. The back row folds down and you can have a full, uh, kind of a full, you know, storage area, utility area. It's a wooden bait, it's a wooden bottom to that though. Uh, some people actually would put a third row in there, like a station wagon. Um, there's uh, uh, basically just a real utilitarian interior. Um, not much there. The cranks and everything I have, I took them off because I undercoated it after I rust converted it. Um, in the front, you can kind of see some of the stuff. <sighs> Also, side note, she is going to be a little adventurer when she gets older because she's already been on two road trips. Uh, 
She's been in four states, and she's done all sorts of adventures, and she's not even three months old. So get your kids out there. Let them see stuff. Um, anyway, interior. The, uh, the dash is pretty spartan. It had a, a padded dash, uh, which I hate. It's just, it dates everything so much, so I tore that off. Um, I haven't sanded it down or anything yet, but it'll be a nice, you know, nice looking steel dash when it's done. And then um, you can see just uh, two pedals, because like I said, this is an automatic model. It's called the city model, two wheel drive, uh, which is a little more difficult to find. Um, in the glove box actually has the fuses in here, which is pretty cool. Um, everything on this truck, was made to use and made to be easy, made to be practical. Uh, farmers don't really put up with things that are done just for style, um, but uh, so they make it easy. Um, the uh, you know double visors was actually an option uh, on that. Seat belts was actually an option. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not not on the '68. It wasn't an option. Um, if you take a look over here. You can see all the different pieces I've kind of taken apart right now, but on the seatbelts you can see the IH logo. If you look up International Har Harvester logo, this is what you're going to find. It's an I Im imposed over an H, and that's kind of a cool fact. Um, it's called the Man on Tractor logo, and uh, Robert, Robert Lowy, um, actually they hired him to come in, very famous designer, to come in and make him a logo. and. If you look at it straight on, it's two wheels in a center bar, and the I dot is the man's head. And it looks like a man on a tractor driving towards you, which is kind of cool because it shows their history of the of the you know International Harvester Company. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, kind of a weird fact. Um, anyway, if you take a look in the back seat, that's the uh, 1965 International Travel All grill. You can see it's totally different looking, um, but it does bolt right on, and so I'm going to be using that uh, instead to make it look a little bit earlier. And, um, you know, throw it back a little bit. The plan is to, I think, make it blue, uh, possibly a white top, um, thin white walls like it has now. Um, no carpet, we're just going to bed liner the floor, you know, use it as a, like I said, a, a truck, but a family hauler. Um, and uh, hold this one around. And, uh, but uh, anyway, like I said, I got it running, I got it started. Um, I'm waiting on uh, my gas tank to get re relined right now and then we're gonna try to fire it up and actually drive it. It's got all new brakes already, which is cool. Um, and uh, hopefully it shouldn't take too much to get this thing on the road. So uh, keep you know checking back on, on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, I'm sure you'll see this thing driving pretty quick. Um, you saying goodbye, Ellie? Anyway, I figure this satisfies everybody's urge to uh, get more uh, baby on the account because everybody keeps yelling at me that I don't show enough of her. But anyway, um, so this is the uh, the family wagon edition of Finish 55 Garage. Um, thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.